I'm Jan Worm and we're in my studio in Berkeley right now and I'm very happy that Wendy Martin is here with me today and that we'll be having a conversation about art, life, the creative life, mm -hmm. um, women in contemporary society and anything else that crosses our minds and our, um, our day today. Yeah. Then did you actually uh, consciously look at the work of other people or did you have influences? Did you have inspirations or did you somehow just continue to see the world your own way and not think about how others did it? Oh, I, I think um, we're always looking at what others did. Yeah. yeah. Certainly. And I think the degree of how that influences us influences us changes with time so that the older and more developed we are in our work and, and older not in the sense of just age but how long we've been doing it yeah. the less the impact of the, that influence um, so we are bringing it in and processing it differently later but you know the very earliest things I think um, you know we look at um, fairy tale illustrations and um, It just it's just every bit and piece that we have that comes our way and I think as children in particular we spend a lot more time just staring at images and looking at them and really um, getting into them and, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. it's almost like osmosis where we become them and they become part of us yeah so um, and I I had the incredible fortune of having parents who loved museums and we lived in Europe and we traveled a lot so um, I saw my, my mother took me to museums in in Germany and in, in Holland to Amsterdam so the early influences my first trip to Florence I was nine years old that was the big trip was you know Michelangelo and mm -hmm. um, his sculpture his mm -hmm. his drawings um, but when did you evolve this style who would would you say you were influenced by pa any particular painter or school of painters or how did, you know, if I look at your paintings now, and I, I don't know your early work, so I, I don't have a, an image of something that you did, say, when you were 15 or 20. Mm -hmm. um, but, but you would say there's a certain consistency to what you've done. Say I've known your work maybe 15 or 20 years so, or so. So it's been fairly consistent during that time, wouldn't you say? Yeah. So when did that evolve and how did that come about? And what were the choices you decided to make when you, as you evolved what I would call your signature style or your, you know, your characteristic um, kind of aesthetic um, priorities? To talk about, about what we really loved and um, and how we related to something and, and why it was meaningful to us mm -hmm. brings up a, a really basic, uh, some basic concerns and, and, and positions in the world, I think. So one thing is that um, my work has always been figurative and I've always been involved with um, the human form Mm -hmm. experience interaction there's always been an underlying narrative in the work mm -hmm. and the work that that really spoke to me when I was very young was um, a lot of it was sculpture mm. Michelangelo uh, a lot of it was drawing his drawings um, so like when I was 12 years old I would be copying and drawing his mm -hmm. drawings yeah. of his yeah. um, I first was in Amsterdam when I was 11 in Rembrandt's work just really um, consumed me for a while mm -hmm. uh, and and when I was 12 I started working in oil paint and and working after um, pulling together some of that emotional content in the work I was looking at and then when I was um, I guess in in the in the 14 15 year range which was incredibly important and formative to me I was looking at the work of um, well, three artists in particular. Um, one was James Ensor, whose work I really loved, and mm -hmm. and it animated a, a lot of um, 
relationship and, and social criticism and involvement in looking around beyond my family, because I think initially, and this is true for many young artists, you look at yourself, you look at your family, and then you look at your community, yeah. and you look yeah. at the society around you. Um, and then um, Vuillard was very important to me, and LA County had some Vuillard paintings. So um, space, color, um, pattern, obscurity, um, how much you could abstract and still retain a sense of understanding and presence. Yeah. And then, you know, the <clears throat> grandfather of us all, the big granddaddy for all of us, is Matisse and, and was Matisse. And um, there was a big Matisse show at UCLA that I saw that year when I was mm -hmm. 15 and um, took my babysitting money and bought the catalog. It was like the first big art catalog I bought. And, um, you know, there's certain people who who have probably affected almost every artist. So when we talk about um, Van Gogh, you know, his, his impact is just astounding in terms of what he did, the color, yeah. the impact, the his brushwork, the, the emotion of all of that. And that was work that I first saw in, in the Netherlands and in Holland when I was 11. And it, so it, it's, a, it's a back and forth between these different elements when you're young. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and how one relates really is from how we're interpreting the work we're looking at and how we then um, embrace it and embrace a certain relationship to uh, what and how we want to talk about the life around us. Yeah. Well, for example, it. let's yeah. start with Matisse, which as yes. soon as you said Matisse, I said, yeah. oh, I saw something <laughs> I hadn't seen or I, 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 I put it together in a different way. Yeah. So how would you say that uh, Matisse influenced you, for example, just, just in, the, in, in some really basic or, or important way? I mean, I can see a few things. What, what would you say? Well, certainly as a colorist, uh -huh. there, there's that strong um, resonance yeah, with, with yeah. his work. Yeah. Um, and with the way in which he... Um, how, how he deals with with his figures and his objects in a way to create a kind of, um, a, well, a very lyrical movement throughout mm -hmm. the picture plane. Yeah. So that's very liberating, that the idea that you are not necessarily representing some scene or that you are being in some way illustrative of an idea that you go to, mm -hmm. but that you in fact have the freedom to move and change things according to you know your shapes your forms that you're pulling out of space your color um, and and the line work and the idea that you can have line for its own sake that's going to speak um, mm -hmm. throughout a, a, a painting yeah and I can see I happen to be looking at these paintings <laughs> across the way here so but I, I can see for example um, the way he does um, I, I you know Fabrics, or, 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 or I guess you call visual textures, and, and uh, I see a lot of that in your work, where even the floor, for example, in this painting, which I, is a tile, but you've made it a kind of interesting blue, and, and many of the clothes are blue as well, but they're different blues, and they're, so they all have kind of equal value. I mean, the, the, the floor color and texture, it has a life of its own, really. It's quite remarkable. Like, almost like a tapestry yeah well and, and it comes right up to you it yeah. comes right yeah. up and off and yeah. and 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 the the tile work here in in the bats also yeah. Yeah. Is, is doing the same the uh -huh. same thing so yeah. that um I, I like the idea of the space which is actually very minimal i mean i don't have any detail if it's blue it's sky if it's green it's grass yeah but on the other hand it also pulsates and it has this um it, it's animated in a different way so that you, I'd like to like feel that I can breathe in the paintings. Mm -hmm. And then um, in terms of, oh, what shall I say, the, the subjects of your, the, the human subjects of your paintings, would you say they represent any particular group? Like for example, they're mostly, well, it just so happens in the paintings I'm looking at here, may not be everywhere of course but there are a lot of blondes and redheads I notice yeah. <laughs> and uh, is that a, a deliberate uh, choice and it must be but 
but what would you say is behind it and what does that represent? Well, for the most part, the things that I'm painting are things that are actually not a part of my life. I mean, there yeah. are paintings that are are a part of my life or come out of my life. Yeah. And um, but the counterpart to that is um, work, which is in fact looking at uh, things that I'm not a part of, things I don't understand. Mm -hmm. So that a, a lot of images deal with sports, and I have no understanding, do not participate in sports in any way, uh -huh. or activities that men engage in, um, whether it's it's boxing or warfare or um, basketball or anything like that. I mean, it's clearly something that I don't understand, and for me it's a way of processing and looking at it and seeing what function it has for men in society, in their interactions, what are they working out in these different activities, what's going on, and whether it's um, you know, a handshake mm -hmm. or a, a business interaction, it's something that I've been looking at from the outside. Mm -hmm. So uh, having them all blonde and red or redhead, um, but particularly blonde, is a sense of separation and non autobiography mm -hmm, in that mm -hmm. sense yeah um, but then but then red my, my colors are used symbolically and red is very much about if a woman's wearing red it's about the Jezebel the questioning where she places herself relative mm -hmm. to norms mm -hmm. so it's an assertive kind of aggressive uh, <laughs> yes. stance or expression it is, it is. I see uh -huh. <laughs> yeah and, and then how do you how do you describe the uh, or, or or what would you say the the uh, impact and what is the impact you hope that this very kind of angular you know I mean they all have very pronounced uh, jaws jaw lines and um, often the eyes are are quite um, no they're not always they don't always appear to be open you know they're like a very angular and somewhat sometimes hard, hard edged, but, but, um, I mean, they're always, every body, every, by which I mean literal body in your paintings has a powerful expression. I mean, distinctive and unlike the others. And yet they all look as though they're part of some tribe, some, you know, community that is linked somehow. And I'm what? Yeah. Well, um, very often, it, it's rare for these figures to actually have eye contact with each other. That's true. So, um, and very often, um, the women are, are um, their eyes are down, downcast. Yeah, yeah. And um, they're either downcast because they're avoiding that kind of contact, mm -hmm. or they're internalized, or they feel objectified. Mm -hmm. uh, very often, um, and it's hard because there isn't a painting like this, but very often if there is an animal in the in the painting, if there's mm. a dog or a cat or or even if it's an inanimate object like a, a, an animal on a carousel, that's where there's eye contact with the viewer, where there's engagement, where um, that's the witness of what's going on, the lack of communication or uh, a, a distancing or... Um, some kind of power struggle, and so the way of entering for the for the viewers actually through one figure or another, and mm -hmm. very often it's it's a dog or an object that uh -huh. represents represents something um, inanimate or. Do you think context. though, as, as if I were to look at this painting mm -hmm. here, that different viewers um, form a bond with different uh, characters in the painting or different figures in the painting? I mean, for example, you've got you've got the interaction over the, the counter there. I guess he's selling uh, looks like he's selling pastries or whatever. But so it's a cafe, and he he's got his arm. I mean, the male is the one who's defended. <laughs> he's got his arms crossed and close to his body, and yet she seems to be, in some way, you know, entreating him or supplicating. You know, she's got a she's got not an aggressive. Uh, uh, not, not at least um, negatively aggressive. I mean, I don't know. She seems to be entreating it. It's like an entreaty somehow. She, 
I, I'm trying to understand what you know what is going on. So very powerful. It's just two people, and she's probably ordering a, a poisson or whatever. But it looks like a lot more is going on, mm -hmm. and it's it's very powerful. And uh, and are you in that particular instance trying to convey uh, a specific uh, constellation of emotions, or you just caught it visually and you thought it's important? I'm going to capture it and and then I can analyze it later. Well, actually, these things are, are usually highly constructed yeah, yeah, <laughs> with a yeah. lot of thought, like, like yeah. not later, but, but, yeah, but, but it before. Yeah. And, and one of the things that strikes me, and we're in Berkeley with an incredible cafe culture. Yeah. We, or we had a, a great cafe culture and a great bookstore culture. And I was always interested in the interaction, male, female, and what goes on with these very simple interactions. And one of the huge changes about our cafe life is um, the electronic phenomenon oh. of everyone on their computers. Yeah. And so here we have a painting which I consider, if you, I mean, I don't, titles are not usually important, but I give them. In this case, you know, 24 7. I mean, AM, PM or I don't even know what I titled it, but the idea that you can't tell from which side is day and night, yeah. that, um, that the lighting is the lighting on the screen, it doesn't matter, that uh -huh. all of these men are absorbed and totally oblivious yeah. of yeah. the females who are in here. That's a good um, point. And, and so what could have been a charged um, interaction where almost every encounter has some kind of erotic charge, either a very flat one or a very high peaking one, but that there's an interaction that, that there's no doubt that, um, that when you have these two um, individuals who are humans, that Ooh. they are immediately checking each other out in terms of a whole list of things we go through in our, what, 30 seconds in which we summarize this person, is this a mate or not? Mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. and here, I mean, it's very clear that he's disengaged Mm -hmm. and 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 she has an availability uh, and and this is very different because all of these men are all the males in this in this um, scene are totally absorbed into this other world they're not present yeah, that, that, you know, there's a right. lack of presence yeah in, in this scene yeah I mean fiercely and defensively I would say for the all of them really I mean that's a very a very uh, interesting um, Analysis because it's certainly, certainly, uh, especially after you explain it, you know, it's, it's extraordinarily clear. Uh, and even the the woman on the left, um, yes. yeah, <laughs> is absorbed in her iPhone or whatever yes. it is, yeah, she her smartphone, it. yeah, completely. Uh, yeah. So the only one who seems to be actually trying to make any contact at all is is the woman at the counter. Uh, and and it may be who knows for what reason. <laughs> Very yeah. Well, probably um, only because she wants to make sure that she gets her yeah. true like uh -huh. soy latte, yeah. low yeah. fat, no uh -huh. sugar. Uh -huh. Right, 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 right. <laughs> who right, knows right. What, yeah. what goes into it? Um, but uh, you know, I I think every every encounter holds a lot of information about who we are as a society at this point in time. And um, w when we come up with very little information, that's, it says a lot too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's really very, very different than, um, than what one would expect in a, in, a, in a public place where you expect social interaction. And that the electronic device, you know, everyone has their device, whatever it is, obviates that. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, when you're, when you're in the post office, people are on their phones and they're checking their email. And nobody even has any casual contact. Mm -hmm. And when people are um, in, in a situation where they used to be able to talk to each other, you know, in a very, um, just, just that social fabric that we talk about. Yeah. Um, is pretty thin. Yeah, yeah. Interestingly,